we have with us uh, Grandmaster R.P. Ramesh and uh, I can say a chess guru of India. Uh, sir, first of all, many, many congratulations on performance of your student, uh, Murli Karthike. Thank you. Uh, to finish in Gibraltar. Uh, what do you want to say for first uh, when you know about that he is win this second position? What was your reaction? Okay, uh, basically, like it's not uh, very easy to beat a world top 10 player. Uh, uh, even with the white pieces. So, he was playing with uh, MBL uh, Vashir Lagrave in the last round with the white pieces. He was getting double whites and uh, I was just hoping uh, things will go well. But uh, usually I try not to have too much expectations before the game or during the game. Because if uh, it turns out differently then it will be tough to accept it. So, I was just uh, hoping things will turn out well and I am very happy that uh, he could beat uh, three grandmasters uh, about 2700. Uh, rating in three consecutive rounds and I think that's a that will give a lot of uh, confidence for him in himself so I'm very happy it, it happened okay uh, any of game or any position in last three games you like very much okay all the three games were uh, quite uh, nice and very instructive uh, I think in the last five rounds he won all the five games so that in itself is a good record and in the Third round, uh, the first uh, 2700 he bet that was uh, Raf Mamado, and uh, it was a Karakan defense where Karthik and Mulli was playing black. Usually Karthik doesn't uh, play Karakan much, but he had been uh, working on it for some time. And uh, Raf Mamado played uh, the advanced variation, and uh, Karthik played uh, C5. Usually people play BF5 for E5, but he went for the C5, which is also becoming quite popular. Uh, nowadays at least in the correspondence level games it's quite popular and uh, uh, Mamadou chose a line uh, with DC5 followed by A3 and uh, Karthikeyan reacted with the move F6 and that's a very critical followed by Knight D7 immediately challenging the center uh, the pawn on E5 and at one point uh, after C4 CD5 uh, Karthikeyan Muli went for quick development with Bishop D6 and uh, castle and uh, after cd5 ed5 at one point he got an isolated uh, pawn on d5 so in general uh, playing with an isolated pawn with less pieces on the board is not advisable but uh, soon it happened like uh, white's knight uh, went to a4 the edge of the board and uh, uh, also uh, the pawn on d5 it could become weak or uh, it could also be a good pass pawn if it is adequately defended uh, from behind. So, on the, in the center of the battle was either uh, a d5 pawn is going to be a weakness or a powerful pass pawn and the knight on a4 was kind of misplaced and uh, Kartikeyan used this opportunity to create some uh, weakness on the king side as well by going knight g4, g3, queen and 6 ideas provoking uh, h4 weakness. And then uh, once he created the weakness on the king side as well white had uh, to handle three things one the weakness on the king side the knight on a4 is kind of misplaced and also the pawn on d5 it could it was slowly kind of becoming a little uh, dangerous and then uh, using the all these uh, three weaknesses in white's position uh, Kartikeyan won an exchange uh, but he had to give a few pawns in the process the d5 pawn and the h5 pawn uh, so and then uh, he showed good technique he won the b5 pawn and created a pass pawn and uh, won the end game with an exchange up. So that was a uh, clean game from uh, Karthi. And then in the penultimate round, he was playing with uh, uh, Matlakov uh, with white pieces. And it was a Sizzle knight off. And he played the bishop e2, e5, knight of 3. This line is uh, uh, probably like a couple of years ago, this was not almost uh, never played. People usually go for uh, bishop e2, e5, knight b3 lines. But he went for uh, knight f3, which is also becoming quite popular recently. This is something similar to the line 6th move, bishop e3, e5, knight f3, which is quite popular. Uh, the main difference is in bishop e3, e5, knight f3. Later, white will play bishop g5 at some point and thereby losing a tempo and uh, here in bishop e2 e5 knight of three lines uh, sometimes we go for bishop c4 at a later stage uh, also losing a tempo 
and uh, here we have some uh, extra options uh, sometimes we may not have to go for bishop c4 and uh, in bishop e3 if i knight of three lines we may not have to go for bishop g5 so these are the small nuances but in both the cases the main idea is try to exchange as many minor pieces as possible and try to reach uh, uh, the knight of three versus bishop e7 basically a knight d5 if you can get it that will be fantastic try to reach a knight versus bishop uh, good knight versus bad bishop kind of uh, end games that's what usually white hopes for in such structures and i think in one of the critical moments where uh, was uh, in the opening uh, uh, Matlako played knight g4, Kartikan responded bd2, he again went back knight of 6 and Kartikan came back bishop e3 showing the intention to agree for a draw. Uh, but uh, Matlako decided not to repeat the moves there and uh, he avoided the uh, repetition. I think that is one critical decision. Had he taken the repetition this result would not have been possible. And the other important decision was uh, Kartikan went for knight h4, knight of 5 plan and Matlako responded with uh, d5. I think that move is little uh, suspect because after uh, rook of d1, ed5 and then rook of d1, knight c3, bishop c3 and then he got knight of 5, knight d6. And the knight was very strong and uh, he lost the e5 pawn in the process. And after becoming a pawn up, uh, Karthik and Muli gave back uh, uh, two pieces for rook uh, by taking on uh, knight of 7 and uh, in the process he got uh, rook and two pawns versus uh, two pieces which materially it is in uh, Karthi's uh, favor and then he showed very good technique and uh, he created a pass pawn on the h file and uh, also it, he used it as a distraction to lure the bishop and uh, king uh, to stop the h pawn and he entered uh, with the king king b5 king c6 and finally he gave uh, the rook for uh, knight rook d7 and took king into b6 and he got uh, two uh, too many pass pawns and uh, black gave up so i think he showed uh, he got some uh, he is kind of outplayed uh, black in the opening itself got a good position and showed very good technique and converted the advantage in the end game so it was again a very clean game where things were not fluctuating too much and in the final round against uh, mvl uh, it was again a sizzling night off but this time he went for uh, bishop e3 and g4 and uh, he came up with a new idea, not very new but uh, not very popular let's say, h4 followed by knight f3 and uh, usually people go for uh, queen d2 f3 setups or uh, immediate h3, they don't uh, usually go for h4 knight f3 plans uh, and it uh, worked very well. I think the critical moment was when uh, Kartikan played rook d1, uh, I feel uh, mwell should have taken uh, bishop c3, bc3 and then rook g8 probably even uh, black is slightly better there he has some uh, attacking possibilities on the king side uh, with some queen c5 knight d4 queen e5 kind of ideas uh, coming later so i think uh, he missed that moment but and played rook g8 very quickly i think that was the first step in the wrong direction and uh, immediately karthi played knight d5 exchanged the queens with a slightly better pawn structure and a pair of bishops and uh, the second uh, critical moment was when uh, Yamwell played uh, bishop g5, bishop g3, again bishop at 6. So basically bishop was on h6 and uh, he played bishop g5, bishop at 6 the next two moves, uh, basically losing a tempo. Not only that, in the process uh, he gave the h4 square for the knight. Uh, so immediately which uh, Karthi exploited by playing knight h4, knight f5. And I think after that, uh, uh, positionally the game is lost for uh, black. And uh, Karthi won an exchange with bd5 check and uh, bishop into g8. And uh, Vashir, instead of recapturing rook g8 and playing a rook down, exchange down in a hopeless position, he went for some complications with knight of 3, knight e1. But uh, it is not very difficult to defend. Uh, even though Karthi was in a small time trouble, he played the correct moves and uh, won a piece and converted it uh, without any issues. So I think uh, all the three games were of uh, good quality and he was not playing any shaky moves. So that's a very good sign. Uh, sir, uh how important this victory uh, for uh, Karthikeyan? How, I think how do you see this? I think it's a, a, a very big uh, breakthrough which he was looking for uh, in his career. He has already won uh, two na national titles, uh, Indian National Championship uh, twice earlier. So it's not like he has uh, 
not performed at a higher level and he has already reached this high rating of 2614 a few months ago the last year and uh, the last three tournaments he played he did not do as well uh, he has been uh, dropping points regularly and uh, more worryingly he was uh, drawing uh, too many games with lower rated players i believe in delhi open he drew six games and all of them against the lower rated players sometimes even uh, 1800 uh, level players he was uh, drawing and that was happening uh, too often and he was dropping rating points steadily in the last three tournaments and uh, his calculation was also suffering a little bit he was uh, missing uh, many of opponent uh, critical moves when he was calculating variations so but these things like it's very tough to handle it in the middle of uh, tournaments and he was playing one tournament after the other and uh, i'm very happy that he could uh, overcome that uh, bad phase uh, with uh, such a resounding uh, performance at this level and uh, beating even one uh, 2700 player usually it gives a lot of confidence and beating three of them in a row and also finishing uh, sole second in such a strong tournament where uh, players of caliber like uh, nakamura uh, aronian and all these guys obviously and finishing ahead of them and uh, it's a fantastic performance i think that will give uh, a big big boost for his uh, confidence uh, and rating of course but also more importantly it also gives him visibility among the organizers and the top players so now he will not be taken lightly anymore everyone will start noticing him and hopefully he will start getting good conditions from uh, organizers uh, as you mentioned uh, he he was going through a bad phase what were uh, what was your talking with him that time what was your talk between no yeah, basically like he was playing in tournaments and i'm uh, at chennai and uh, in the last uh, whole of uh, january i was in uh, vacancy with uh, pragnananda and uh, it's not easy to handle a player in bad form because uh, he, he, there is no like uh, ready solution for uh, some issues sometimes uh, time is the best solution <laughs> you just have to go through that phase sometimes and if uh, like uh, he is usually fantastic in calculations and in this phase he was making mistakes in calculation so it's not like his calculation ability is bad but it's just uh, going through a bad phase and he's making mistakes even in areas where he usually does well so i just uh, told him like uh, try to relax yourself we used to chat regularly on uh, whatsapp and skype and uh, after every game he usually gives us result and his view like how things went and i also share my views so uh, we knew that we had to be patient and uh, getting frustrated is not the solution or losing confidence is not the solution we just uh, have to keep uh, working on these areas so and eventually it turned out well this is my last question about uh, you are teaching uh, you are working with pragnananda from long time and nihal is doing really well and now gokesh become the second youngest grandmaster uh, how you feel to when you see these such uh, youngsters <laughs> around you okay one thing is like i'm very happy for uh, the way indian chess is growing and uh, very happy that uh, gokesh has beaten uh, pragnananda's record okay uh, to be honest it hurt a little bit because he could not even uh, hold on for one year with this uh, record of being the second youngest uh, gm but i think uh, records are uh, made to be broken and i'm happy that an indian could uh, do it and uh, uh, gokesh has always been a very good prospect uh, i'd seen him in uh, kan open a couple of years back uh, when i had gone with uh, prag and few other players and he was already doing quite well and uh, you have to see the commitment his parents have shown and his coach vishnu prasanna uh, as a team uh, they have been doing a fantastic job and i think that's good for chess uh, that uh, now the young players they have uh, more role, role models to look up to and uh, uh, the records are meant to be broken as i said so i'm uh, happy that kukesh uh, could do it and uh, regarding nihal sarin he has been uh, doing phenomenally really well and his rating is also quite high for his age like 25 76 or something like that and uh, in the recently world uh, Uh, blitz championship he did uh, fantastic uh, beating so many high rated players uh, convincingly so i think uh, indian mentors is in uh, right hands we have a young generation who can uh, shoulder all these responsibilities and i just hope more young children will uh, come up your work with indian team and indian chess is phenomenal thank you so much to talking to us thank you